A large experimental study shows that Americans make poor decisions because they ignore their black peers. But there is a remedy. Organizations are becoming racially and ethnically more diverse. That's so important for our country. We know from studies that minority members bring to organizations distinctive perspectives. Now, what if white Americans are not paying attention to their black peers? In an experimental setting, we find that white Americans are less likely to pay attention to their black peers, even when it's in their interest to do so. That finding is worrisome. It indicates that our society and the organizations that are part of it suffer from a racial attention deficit. In recent years, we've seen concentrated efforts towards equity. But still, when you talk to members of a minority, they often say that they feel ignored, that their contributions are undervalued by their peers. We wanted to understand what exactly is happening and how it can be remedied. The researchers gathered over 2,500 white working age Americans balanced by gender and conducted experiments to understand how people pay attention to peers of different races. Each participant in the experiments received a puzzle. It was a hard problem, but if they solved it, they could earn money. So it was in their self-interest to get all the hints they could. Each participant received a problem and could observe how two peers solved the same problem. The solution remained the same but the race of the peers changed. Half of the participants saw white peers and half saw black peers. Then the participants submitted their solutions to the puzzle and also rated the competence of the peers. We found something remarkable. Participants were far more likely to pay attention to white peers than to black peers. And remember, we didn't ask our participants to like or befriend their peers. In fact, they didn't interact at all. The peers just provided hints to the solution. The researchers uncovered a pattern of racial attention deficit. When analyzing the peer ratings, they discovered the participants rated black peers as substantially less competent, qualified, or reasonable than the white ones. At this point, we started thinking about ways to reverse the racial attention deficit. We tried two popular solutions. One is giving a credential, something that certifies your good skills, like a college degree or a professional license or military rank. Another is first-hand experience with the peers. Here there's no certification from a third party, just your experience with the peers. The researchers conducted two more experiments seeking a cure for the racial attention deficit. In one, Participants underwent a skill test, received their own score, and the scores of the peers. When participants received the test scores of the peers, they no longer viewed black peers as less competent. But amazingly, they were still likely to overlook the advice of the black peers compared to white peers. The white-black gap disappeared in ratings of competence, but the gap remained in actual behavior whites were still less likely to pay attention to blacks. So the researchers tried a second experiment. Let the participants solve problems together. We did not give information about credentials, just let participants repeatedly solve problems and see how their peers solve the same problems. In the first problem, the racial attention deficit was evident, but as participants accumulated experience with their peers, the racial attention deficit weakened eventually fading away. There are two important lessons here. One, letting minorities in the room is not enough. They must get a seat at the table. And two, there are different ways to get them a seat at the table. And experiential recognition seems to work well. We can remedy the racial attention deficit by recognizing the accomplishments of black peers, but this must be embedded in everyday organizational practice. Read the study at Science Advances.